do not use services in the microservices paradigm. When a service is responsible for delivering its own messages, it leads to a service overload because very often developers try to do some sort of pseudo synchronization. That's not a fail safe system. Which should trigger the message, the system or the enterprise service bus? Hello everyone, I'm Andrei Putin and today I would like to talk to you about ESBs and about who should be triggering the message stream from the system to the ESB. Let's take a look at a simple example. We have an eShop that generates orders. Who should be receiving these orders? Nobody owes nobody nothing. You owe yourself. Should the eShop be contacting the ESB? I mean, let's take a look what is the gate of an ESB. The ETL layer is the gate of an ESB. So should the eShop be telling the ESB about a new order or should the ESB be extracting those new orders stored in the eShop? Very often, I mostly see the first option being implemented. That is when the service is responsible for delivering its own messages. What does this lead to? It can lead to a service overload. This service develops fail-safe means of reliable message delivery in case the ETL layer is not available and that it may not be available for some reason. We should anticipate this and answer the question, what if something goes wrong? In this case, we need to think of some mechanisms. For example, we should add a message broker inside. So we have here an order repository. In general context, these are orders. And here, we also have a message broker or some flags indicating message delivery. In addition, it's usually believed that it is also fast. Although, in fact, to put these flags or to add something else inside the message broker will still take some resources. The system will still need to do something. And if you have a lot of messages, for example, dozens or hundreds of messages per minute, then you have to consider the transaction costs for each message. It will still take a lot of computing resources to check what you sent and what you didn't send, what was delivered and what wasn't. So, I encourage you to be very, very careful when using the service to deliver its own messages to the ETL layer. Because in terms of the alienation paradigm, which is the easy transfer of services to another team or replacing a service with some other one, you want there to be less logic so that every part of the system would be responsible for itself. The ETL layer is responsible for the reliable delivery. It already has a huge number of control mechanisms. If it fails, once it's back up, it will go for a new batch of data. It will process it and will put it in the context of the enterprise. From there, other connectors will send the information somewhere else, for example, to an OMS system. orders. So I encourage you to be very careful when using this mechanism. Do not use services in the microservices paradigm. A microservice can communicate and can be event-driven. What does a service usually need to tell other systems? The output of its process. Communication between services should be asynchronous, both technically and in reality. Because very often, developers try to do some sort of pseudo-synchronization, meaning that a message is sent to a message broker, but we still hope that this message will be processed very quickly. That's not a fail-safe system. That's it. Goodbye.